We, uh, we, we promised that from the three breakout sessions, we would close today's full summit with some of the takeaways. So I wanted to bring back up to the stage to go over those three breakout sessions with some quick takeaways, uh, our three moderators from, from the three sessions. So first we have Lolita Lopez, KNBC reporter, who was moderating the power of girls who play. We have Tony Brown, who was who is the executive director with the Heart of Los Angeles, who moderated the Equity in Play session. And Mark Hyman from George Washington University, who moderated the Playing Smart Hello, How are you? session. Hello. And of course, Renata Simrall. So we're going <clears> to. <throat> yeah, hang on. Give me another room. I like that. I like the loose. So let's start with you. Lolita, because Perfect. you were the first session. You okay. were the power of girls who play. Yes. Yes. OK, so we had a really great session. And a part of our talk, a big part, was not just girls who play, but girls who stay. Because after the adolescent age, lots of women and young girls just drop out of sports. So we had five really, really great takeaways for you guys to take home as well. Um, number one, it's important for girls to see female athletes who look like them. So if you've ever played a sport, if you're a former college player, go back to your communities, go to those YMCA's, go to the programs that LA84 have, and show them that you did it, that they can do it too. Number two, the need to educate parents about the positive impact of sports on girls. We were talking specifically about Latino cultures who the parents just don't understand that it's okay for the girl to play and what benefits they get from that. So maybe bring the mom out and have them come to practice one day, be a part of the practice so that they can see that. Make sure the parents understand the power of play. Number three, it's important what your body can do and not what it looks like. We're all different body types. We don't look the same. What you do with that body is what it's important. So make sure that you tell girls and praise girls in the right way. They're not just pretty, they're powerful, right? They're not just sweet, they're smart. So make sure those things come into play. Number four, same-sex role models matter to girls. This is a significant number of uh, women who just are not coaching at the collegiate levels, at the high school levels. So support your female coaches. Or maybe there's a young player who may not make it to the higher levels of play, but she's a really great teammate. She could be a really good coach. So support those girls in that way. And number five, stop blaming women for the lack of women coaches. Interrogate the system at the organizational level. It is incumbent upon us as women to ask questions, to come together, to empower ourselves. If you can't do it alone, do it with other people, but make sure you fight the system. That's what we learned. Awesome. Great. great. Yeah, that's great. I like the fact that she had five, too. Olympic ring, she had five points. Good job, <laughs> yeah, there you go, Lolita. Tony? All right, so we were equity in play, safety, space, and money. This is what we want you to know. We're not valuing the equity problem enough. Uh, we need to communicate that sports are not just about playing sports, but the ancillary benefits to playing sports are just as important as the playing itself. Mm -hmm. And then also, we as organizations need to uh, probably develop better ways of sharing that message, mm -hmm. right? The ancillary benefits of sport. And I think the biggest takeaway is that we need to come together around this and around our common challenges of equity and safety, ac access to sport fields, which we heard quite a bit, uh, and also uh, money. We need to do this with one unified voice, okay? And we all need to be on the same page with that because we have some things in common that we all need more of uh, if we're trying to make this world a little more equitable, uh, particularly in sport. So we need to come together around those things. Great. Okay, well done. So our session was Playing Smart, Solutions to the Youth Sports Dropout Problem. And we interpreted dropout to also include problems of access to sport. So our first point was engagement of coaches is critical. And in this regard, uh, the important points were about coaches who are inspiring and role models and inspire kids to want to come back the next day. Uh, number two, we need to make sports fun. If sports are not fun, if kids don't appreciate the, the fun in sports, then they're not going to be consumers of sports. Number three, sports teach life skills beyond the field of play. And each member of our panel spoke about what would be missing in terms of life skills from their experience mm. if 
they had not been engaged in sport throughout their lives, and that was very interesting. In fact, we learned that Luke Robitaille might be quite a bit heavier because as a child he loved donuts. <laughs> <laughs> I'm guilty of that as well. <laughs> and then um, final, the final point I'd like to make is that it's critical to bring play spaces to where kids live. And that the closer we can bring those spaces, the more engaged they're going to be and the more active they'll be. Awesome, awesome, thank you. Yeah, I, I, and please, big round of applause for our three moderators because- yeah, Great job, yay, thank you. Great job, thank you. That is, that is never an easy role, and I heard from all the different people in the different sessions that they were tremendous, that the questions were flying, it was super interactive and engaged, so. Thank you to you three for your work. Renata, we will leave the stage to you, my dear. Are you leaving me? No, I'm going to stay just to the side. Yeah. yeah. Well, before I uh, share some of my closing remarks and takeaway, um, you remember I talked about Kaylin Moore. You know I'm getting serious now to pull my glasses out. Kaylin Moore this morning? Well, after the, my panel session or my introductory remarks this morning, I got an email from his mother. And I'm going to read you what she wrote. She wrote, thank you for sharing Kaylin's journey. It helps breathe life into a dying situation. We are not our parents' choices. Our youth can rise above their situation and thrive, but it takes an entire village to hold them up. We were that village. And I think today demonstrated the power of sport to drive social change. So I just simply want to say thank you. This work is meaningful to me, as you can tell. I wasn't expecting to get emotional up here, but it is meaningful that we're literally saving kids' lives by the work that you all do to play your part forward. So I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. So give yourselves a round of applause. So today, I think, um, exceeded our expectations. Um, the conversations through the breakout sessions, during lunch, um, you know, during the play periods, during the interviews. Everybody's engaged. They're having conversations. They're making connections. In fact, one of our grantees uh, came out of the equity panel, and he said, you know, I've been meeting to meet Ed Simmons for years. I see his list on there, and I've never had an opportunity to, to meet him. I thought I knew about youth sports. I thought I knew what I was doing, and I've learned so much in an hour. Um, in fact, I found, you know, I know there's a, a soccer field in Cudahy that's been closed down and kids play soccer at two times the national average. He says, so I've now connected with Ed Simmons, and we're, Simmons, and we're gonna figure out how to open that soccer field. That's what today is about. Today is about what are we each doing to make connections, to collaborate, and to play our work forward. So, that, you know, I, the only thing that I can say to leave you there is um, some highlights. So, you know, voices from the field. How many uh, enjoyed listening to our youth today? Are they not incredible young people? I mean, just incredible. I think I need to check Ezra's birth certificate because there's no way in heck he is 11 years old. Just no way. Um, and they're just representative of 25 young people that I hope to go to 50 to 100 young people to help drive our work. And you know, the question that Gary asked about if the kids were given a million dollars, how would they invest it? That's not a uh, hypothetical question. So part of the work that the youth ambassadors are going to be doing for us um, is helping us find uh, opportunities within the communities that they serve to make an impact. So they're going to be able to actually recommend grants to us. And I just wanted to highlight for you some of the uh, opportunities where these kids saw to make that investment. So Ezra says he wants to make investment, more investment for disabled sport. Jahir said he wanted a food plan. So healthy snacks before and after practices and games. Sarah Joy to build facilities, and she highlighted two swim uh, pools that need some upgrade. Kylie, she says she wants support for non-traditional sports, dance, um, cheer. And Emily, Play It Forward Foundation, wants to continue expanding opportunities for equipment and underserved communities so kids can play. Um, the partnership. Um, I think the key point that I took away from the partnership panel this morning, or this afternoon, was alignment of values and shared goals and ambitions is that we need to understand our roles as partners, the roles we play, the values that we bring, and what and how we can contribute, just like a sports team. We all have a role to play, so let's figure that out. Let's focus that collective impact uh, in an area uh, and get to the business of getting some work done. So how is LA84 going to be playing it forward 
over the next year, between now and the next summit. And we sold out a week and a half earlier, which shocked the heck out of me, to be quite honest. Um, so you might want to sign up when we put out the, uh, <laughs> the notice for the summit. Sign up early so that you make sure you get your ticket. Um, number one, um, we're going to, this is the beginning. This is the beginning of our work. It's not the ending. And the, the panels that we highlighted only scratch the surface. And so between now and next uh, October or August or whenever it Amy tells us is the date for the next summit, stay tuned, um, we're going to have a series of smaller convenings at our headquarters. And some of those areas that we're going to focus on and bring uh, some of the folks in this room and other people who aren't in this room to focus on girls, girls' leadership, girls' coaching. We're going to focus on safety and sport, accessibility to sport, accessibility to sport for the disabled, and opportunities to expand fields of play. Uh, specifically soccer as a first example given the statistic that I shared with you this morning. Um, we're also going to focus on skateboarding. You know, I, I think I was, uh, did, did I get around, that must be the skateboarding table. No, I, behind you, I think it's, I see Natali, who else is behind there, Cindy? Cindy? See, I got all the skaters back there, but skateboarding. And skateboarding, um, just generally because it's such a popular sport, but one of the most at-risk uh, youth populations in L.A. County, and quite frankly in the nation, is 15 to 17 year old African American males. And so if the study, if the data that we found is showing that this is the sport that kids are playing, that, that, that age group is playing, that ethnicity is playing, well let's figure out how we can help them have fun. And that while we have them, can we you know, inspire them with Natali, who is a, I think the first ever professor of skateboarding, uh, uh, skateboarding culture and See, who knew that? Skateboarding media and business culture. He's a professor at USC going off to get his a a PhD, and he's using skateboard from an international perspective to drive change in society at an international level. So can we do that here in LA to really start to drive some change and to create some more opportunities for the Kaylin Moores of the world, who, as you know, just touches my heart. So stay tuned for that. What other notes did I have on here, Julie? Oh, this is not the beginning. This is an, the end. And so just in closing, I want to thank you for your time today. I think it went way too short. Again, we scratched the surface. Um, I asked this morning um, if you guys were fired up and ready to go, like me and my team are fired up and ready to go. Let me ask the question again. Are you fired up and ready to go? Yeah. All right. Well, then stay tuned. Make sure you stay connected. Uh, make sure you uh, go on our website, LA, LA Times, LA84.org, my former employer, LA84.org. Um, the, the research report that we talked about, the assessment for the countywide park, uh, park facilities is on our website. Um, there's a tremendous amount of other resource and data is on our website. Call us, let us know how we can be helpful. Um, our information is your information to help you do the work that you do um, better and more impactful for the kids that we serve. So thank you and enjoy the rest of the afternoon. Wait, 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 I'm not done uh, with you. Oh. I'm not done with you. Oh, geez. I have, I have uh, I can't sing. I can't sing. Yeah. I'm telling you that right now. Oh, my gosh. How good was Lex? Uh, he was so good. Dang. Um, wait, that... wait. Nicole? Lex? Dodger Stadium? No. Dodger all right, see, he's, oh, he's, he's going gonna gonna, to get, he's he's gonna gonna get a double book there, huh? He's going to sing the national anthem at Dodger Stadium. Oh, really? How, how cool oh. is that? I love how he was holding his medal, too. That was great. Um, I just want to, can I give one final takeaway? And then I want your, like, overarching final takeaway. My okay. final takeaway was Jair Douglas, who was on the ambassador panel, when asked, what should we be doing? Just make it more fun. That was his answer. Just make it more fun. I love that because I feel like lost in all the noise and all the good intentions of parents and coaches and people in this industry is the fact that kids just want to have fun. Yeah. And it's so bloody serious nowadays. That's a good karaoke song. Yeah. <laughs> they just want to have fun. So I think keeping that in perspective with everything that's going on and reminding coaches and reminding yourself as a parent, they just want to have fun. And sometimes we take away the fun with all the, the details and the seriousness. The one thing I miss the most about playing is the laughter. It was, it was a great thing. Your final, final takeaway. All right, I'm going to be the yin to your yang. OK. Let me get a little serious on you. Uh, my final takeaway is Sherry, uh, Sherry Dean said this. Is Sherry still here? She might have left. Sherry said on the uh, partnership panel, sports is a social justice issue. Sports is a social justice issue, and we shouldn't be fighting for recess. So that's my takeaway. That was a good one. She also said, you're really competitive, if aren't you? You, you got to one-up me, don't you? 
<laughs> if you want to go fast, go alone. If you, you want to go, go far, go, go together. together. All That's right. the best way to finish it. Thank you all.